Hi everyone and welcome to page, um, sorry, to lesson 3-2 on page 101. Okay, rational numbers. We're going to identify and classify what rational numbers are today and we're going to write rational numbers as fractions. Okay, let's move on. Let's start by identifying what rational numbers are. We've looked at this before in the study guide and um, you will see it again if you're watching the study guide after this. A rational number. A rational number, the simplest rational number, is just any natural number. A natural number is just like when you count. Let's say you're counting pencils, you count one, two, three, four, right? That's those are natural numbers. Then but zero is not a natural number. So zero now we have a new um, category for zeros and natural numbers called uh, whole numbers. Okay? So whole numbers are also natural numbers, but natural numbers are not whole numbers. Okay, and then we have integers. Integers are positive and negative whole numbers, right? That are that include natural numbers and the number zero. But and then we have rational numbers. Rational numbers are fractions, integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers. But an integer cannot be a rational number. A whole number cannot be an integer. A natural number cannot be a whole number, and so on. so these don't go out. They just go in. They involve. It's an, it's like an umbrella. When you first learned to count using the numbers one, two, three, as as when you were young, you were using members of a set called natural numbers. If you add zero to the natural numbers, the result is the whole numbers. The whole numbers and, uh, and their opposites make up the set of integers. So negative numbers and positive whole numbers, including the zero. Any number that can be written in the form of a b without a, z, a b being a zero, because when you have it written like this, this is a fraction. But you can't divide a fraction by zero, otherwise you get zero. So b cannot be zero. This is part of a rational, the set of rational numbers. Okay. Some examples of rational numbers are shown below. These are all rational numbers. They include all of these numbers. All of these numbers can be written as a fraction. Okay, let's start now with page 101. Write each rational number as fractions. Okay, so we have this rational number here, what we also call a mixed number. We have 6 over um, 1 6, right? 6 and 1 6. So what we do here when we want to, this is just a little review from back in fifth grade, when we want to convert this into an improper fraction, okay, we multiply, okay, the bottom, sorry, multiply the denominator with the whole number and then we add the numerator so it would be 6 times 6 is 36 plus 1 is 37 over 6 and that's an improper fraction right there okay and now we're going to convert this negative okay uh, convert it into a fraction and what we do is we simply just put it over 1 okay and it becomes negative 23 over 1 okay or the whole fraction becomes negative so let's practice. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14 over 3. Okay, and that can't be simplified. And then 7 over 1. There you go. There's your key answer. For example 2, on page 102, we look at how we can write a decimal as a fraction in simplest form. Right? Remember that you, ha you just have to look at the place value of where it is and you have a tenth and a hundredth so it's 64 hundredth 64 over a hundred and then you simplify this can be divided by 4 and this can be divided by 4 and you get 16 25th okay that's the way to do that and this is just a nice little reminder of the place values over here we have a whole number in the ones and it goes 675 thousands tenth hundred thousand so you put it over a thousand and then you simplify they're both divisible um, I believe by 25 yes so you have 27.25s here and 40.25s on the bottom. Okay, and that's what it would look like. Let's try these. Okay, so we first have 84 hundredth. 84 in the hundredth place, tenth hundredth. 84 hundredth. And when you simplify that, you know that this is divisible by 4. And you know when a number ends in 4, okay, or the last number is divisible by 4, like 4 or 8, that the whole number can be divided by 4. So when you divide them both by 4, you get 21 over 25. And there you have it. That's your answer right there. You can put that right there. And let's try B, 2B. We have 5, a whole number, and then 875 thousandths. So you write 5 decimal 875 
sorry, you don't have to write the decimal because we're writing it as a fraction. 875 thousandths, right? And when you simplify, you can simplify them both by how many 125s are here, 120, how many 125s are here. You can do it by 25s as well. How many 25s are here, how many 25s are here? But even that, you'll find that you can divide again by 5. So I just figured that when I count by, um, when I count by 125, I have 8 of them here, and I have 7 of them here. Because in my head, now you don't have to copy this down, what I'm seeing is I'm seeing 100 here, and I'm seeing 87.5. And I've learned to count by 8s. Right? I've learned by, to count by one eighth. So I know that over here I have seven of them, and over here I have eight of them. So to me it's five and seven eighths. Okay, I hope you saw that as well. Huh, rock music accounted for a decimal three five or thirty five hundredth of the total music sales in recent years. Write this decimal as a fraction in simplest form. Now you know how to write this as a percent, right? This is clearly thirty five percent. But if you write it 35, you can say 35%, 35% or 3500, right? Because it's in the hundred, 3500. They're all the same. They all mean the same. When you simplify this, they're both divisible. Any number that ends in 0 and 5 means they're both divisible by 5. On the top, I have 7 fives, and on the bottom, I have 20 fives. And that is in simplest form. So go ahead and copy that down right there. Also, boys and girls, make sure you're showing all your work. Just the way I've shown my work, make sure you're showing your work as well in these areas so that I know that you watch this video. Okay, now we're on to example 3 on page 102. Now, I've just looked at this entire explanation, and I've seen this explanation many times before. You go ahead, boys and girls, and take a look at this explanation and see if you want to go all the way around the mountain to get to this answer, or if you just want to remember that 66, decimal 66, or decimal 6 bar notation is two-thirds, okay? Um, a lot of us know that 66% is two-thirds. We've memorized that. But they want you to look at this entire operation over here, okay, where you use 10 to multiply, and then you, do, you take away the n, I mean 9n, you divide the n, the 9 out of it, and now you have n equals 6 uh, over 9, or two-thirds when you simplify it. This is one way you can do it. Now, when you have a repeating factor such as zero decimal, zero decimal four two bar notation, that's not going to go over a hundred. Because if it goes up to a hundred, then you're saying that there's a terminating zero right here. It cannot go over a hundred. The rule is that it must go over uh, ninety nine, and you simply get rid of this zero decimal right here. Right there, we go. Okay, and then you simplify. They can both be divisible by three. So you get 14 on the top and 33 on the bottom, and that's your answer. Okay, now let's look at another key concept. Now we know what rational numbers are. We've already focused on this. We know that um, rational numbers, for example, are any number that can be expressed as A over B where B cannot equal zero, right? You know that. And here's an example of all of them, okay? Natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, and then you have your uh, repeating uh, decimal and, uh, or your terminating decimal. Now all rational numbers can be written as a terminating or repeating decimal. Decimals that neither terminate nor repeat, such as the numbers below, are called irrational numbers, so the opposite. Pi is an irrational number. It doesn't repeat. One, four, one, five, nine, two. There's no pattern. And um, over here we have this eight, we have one seven, and then eight, and then seven seven, and then eight, and then three sevens, and then an eight. So the same block of digits does not repeat. These are irrational numbers, and they can also often be infinite. They just keep going. And as you can see, we're going to look at this further in chapter four. Okay, and lastly for our last example here, we're going to example four on page one oh three. We're going to identify all sets to which each number belongs to. Okay, so we have negative uh, two. 6 elevenths. Since negative 2 6 11 can be written as when you when you convert it, you multiply the bottom. 11 times 2 is 22 plus 6 is 28, so negative 28 over 11 as a rational number. Um, you can also divide the 28 divided by 11 and you have your uh, decimal as well. Okay, example B, you have 1, 3, 1, 3, 3, 1, 3, 3, 3, 3, 1. This block will never repeat. This is a non-terminating and non-repeating decimal. Okay, it doesn't end and it doesn't repeat. So it's an irrational number. What about 45? Well, 45, when you're counting, when you first learn to count, 
in first grade or, or kindergarten, you could count up to 45 easily. Okay, now that's a, just a normal, natural number. It's also a whole number. It's not broken up. It's an integer. And it's also a rational number. So this one qualifies as all of them. Let's identify these. Zero. Zero cannot be a natural number. When you start counting, you don't start counting at zero. You start counting at one. So it's not a natural number. But it is an integer. And it's also a rational number. And is it a whole number? Yes, it is. B. One and four fifth. One and four fifth. It is a, sorry, it is a, uh, a mixed number. Okay? It's not a whole number. It's not a natural number. And it, it's not an it's not an integer because it's not a whole number, okay? So it can only be a rational number. And 4C. We have 1 decimal 4, 1, 4, 2, 1, 3, 5, 6, 2. Oh, okay. Um, it doesn't seem to end because we have the dot, dot, dot there, and it seems to go infinitely. So there's no way to identify this number but as an irrational number. And there you have it. These are your key answers as they, they are. So just copy those down. Okay. Okay, and now we have the guided practice. Please leave this for class so we can do it as a warm up together. But complete the independent practice on your own if you need any help. Remember, you can always reference the examples in the textbook example one, example two, and so on. Only page 184 will be your independent practice. See you in class.